this is the man in the fields ritual as per the creepypasta wikia to begin it says this ritual has been passed down throughout the centuries and originates from the british isles during the middle ages where it was viewed as devil worship by puritans and a way to protect your home by those who knew that what was really standing in their fields was not the devil if completed successfully the ritual will ensure you one year of safety physical fiscal and or mental depending on the events during the ritual you will need a house in the countryside preferably with a field of crops out back technically all that's required is a large backyard the larger the better but successes only come from houses in the countryside a candle Attempting to use a flashlight, cell phone, or any other electronic source of light will be unsuccessful, causing the light source to flicker and die after only a few seconds, which is why either a candle, an oil lamp, or any sort of non-electric illumination is recommended. A crucifix, I'll explain why later. A watch or clock to carry around with you. Again, cell phones will not work during the ritual. To begin the ritual, make sure it is late enough for no one around to be outside and make sure that the sun has set the being the ritual is based around will not appear if anyone other than the summoner is around to detect its presence the earliest successful summon was at nine o'clock light your candle go into your yard and whisper seven times but who will scare the crows away while facing the house on the seventh whisper you should hear from behind you that's not your biggest problem Walk back to the house without looking back. As soon as you reach the house, get inside and close the door. Now the ritual begins. Everything in your house that can open has. Take your crucifix into a room with only one door, close the door, and leave it there. That will be your safe room in case the ritual goes wrong. Make sure all the doors, cupboards, cabinets, and whatever else that can open is closed in there. If he gets into your safe room, you are doomed. Your goal is to close everything that is opened before your watch reaches midnight. This sounds easy in description, but think about it. Every bag, every door, every window, every container in your house has just opened. The challenge isn't closing them all, it's remembering them all. As you make your way through your darkened house, you will notice that out of the corner of your eye, you will be able to see a man, dressed in simple farmer's clothes, out of the corner of your eye. His skin is ash gray. Don't look at him, and whatever you do, don't look directly into his eyes, but don't be afraid of him. This is not the man in the fields. He is merely a herald, a referee of sorts, to make sure that you are closing every container. He will be following you, but will not get in your way. Make sure not to look out into your backyard. If you do, you will notice that there is a scarecrow that wasn't there. Its head is a cow's skull, and its limbs are impossibly long versions of a human being's arms and legs. While the skin on its arms and legs is pale, they are not skeletal. The only thing that is missing is a head. If you fail the ritual or do not reach your safe room in time, he will take yours. The reason I was telling you not to look out at the backyard is that you will notice this scarecrow. He will also notice you. He will then begin to get off of his post. This is the man in the fields. If you don't look at the backyard, don't see the post and the scarecrow, you will have until midnight to complete the ritual. If you are 100% sure that everything in your house that can open has closed, make your way to your bed and go to sleep. For exactly one year, you will have complete and total safety in everything you do, depending on when you started the ritual. If you started it three hours from midnight, you will only be completely physically safe. A lot of people have used this to elongate their lives past where they would normally end. People like cancer patients and the elderly. If you started two hours from midnight, you will not only be physically safe, but financially safe for a year. You could quit your job and still never have a need for money. Either you win the lottery or people just feel compelled to give you things for free. However, you will need to set up a plan for the end of the year as your safety will wear off then and you will lose all the money you have won. Make sure to either set up a business or make some smart investments. If you started the ritual one hour from midnight and somehow managed to finish it, highly unlikely, you will be completely and totally safe for one year. None of your actions will ever have any negative consequences. 
I'd tell you not to do anything immoral, but if you're going to go through your entire house in one hour and somehow manage to close all the boxes, doors, windows, cupboards, bags, cabinets, and drawers, then you can do whatever the hell you want. If you did look out at your backyard, if you saw the man in the fields, you will not get any of this, not even if you finished the ritual. If you looked out at the backyards, the man in the fields will get down off his scarecrow post, he will look at you, he will begin sprinting. You have a minute at most to get to your safe room. Run inside and lock it tight, and double check to see if everything is closed inside. You do not want him getting in. You will have to endure him scratching and clawing at the door, shrieking threats and promises of mercy if you open the door. Whatever he says or does, do not open the door. There is no circumstance in which you should leave your safe room to confront the man in the fields. Good luck and stay safe. Well, there you go. Now let's move to the actual event. I know the light isn't great. The only two lights that I'm leaving on are uh, two small ceiling lights. But it should be plenty. The idea of the ritual, uh, the game suggests that when I come back in, there won't be any electricity. Uh, the mention that everything that can be opened will be opened and needs to be closed. It's 10.53. Of course, this is an electronic watch, so I don't need it. Since everything that can be opened will be opened, it's safe to assume, logical to assume, that that um, fuse box breakers, for those, those that aren't familiar, <clears throat> to protect some of the things in your home from power surges, the fuse box in your house uh, uses fuses, which are kind of a little go-between in the circuit that the electricity runs through. And if too much electricity comes through, the fuse burns out to protect the rest of the stuff on the other side of the fuse, the stuff in your house. Which is why you've seen tons of movies where somebody pulls the main lever on a breaker box, a fuse box, and everything shuts off in the house. All the electricity goes out. And tons of movies use the same gimmick where somebody switches the fuse box back on. Uh, that's pretty much based in reality. Um, fuses, the connection to the fuse itself, which allows the electricity to pass through the system, uh, are a physical connection, like plugging something in, but with a switch. So there shouldn't be any electricity at all if the game is successfully started, if the ritual is going according to plan. It's only about five minutes till 11, so it's important that I'm ready now. The lamp is lit. It has to be a lamp. Uh, a candle is foolish. It's likely to blow out. Um, if you watched earlier, you know that a thick fog has moved in. The visibility outside is incredibly low. But, let's give it a shot anyway. This won't blow out. Unless there's really, really, really significant wind, which there shouldn't be. Just a slight breeze and some fog. So as I was saying, if you come back into your home from the beginning of this uh, process, the game, ritual, whatever, if there's any electricity, as soon as you walk in, if you see the LED on, on a, a fridge or an oven, or if you have a screen on your thermostat, um, if any of those things in your home are showing, then either the game doesn't apply to fuses, electrical fuses, uh, the connection being open and closed, or it wasn't successful and the things aren't open. Of course, a quick glance will show you the fridge is closed or the oven is closed. Uh, so you get the idea. You might even be able to see the lights from outside of your home. The instructions, of course, don't say that you have to shut out all of the lights, so I assume that the breaker switch is built in because a later sentence does say make your way through the darkened home house 
closing things, and the only reason for it to be dark is if the electricity is off. And since the game doesn't mention any sort of paranormal ability of the man in the fields or the ashen man or the, the, the ashy character um, affecting the electricity in your home, I would say that it's logical to assume it's implied that it opens the breakers in your home. So I suppose it's a quick reference tip for anyone attempting this, is memorize the route. Uh, if, I mean, I assume you already do, but in case you're not familiar with the breaker box in your house, uh, make sure you know where that is and how to get to it quickly and easily. So when you come back in with your candle or your lamp, you can make your way there first to turn all of the power back on in your house so you can see things clearly so you can close everything up. Makes sense, right? Um, I'm aware some of you are going to be like, well, this is clearly fake <clears throat> crap made up by some kid on the internet. Uh, why are you taking it so serious as he is to think about it that way? Well, all due respect to people making stuff up on the internet and all due respect to the skeptics that would say that this is a waste of time. Uh, <clears throat> at the same time, I, I think that it's uh, just a matter of, of due diligence, just a matter of uh, respect for attempting anything that you take it at least that serious. So, on that note, it is two minutes until 11, so I'll just grab you, just double check, little to-do list here. I suppose some of you will be interested before we get started in seeing that this Is with me. No, uh, no shortcuts. No leaving anything out. All right. Let's see how it goes without further discussion. Your view, if you're interested, is basically held tight against the base of the lamp. Your view, of course, being the camera's view.
Well, as you can see, not everything in the home is open. Of course, if absolutely everything in the home was open, you would expect there to be absolutely no electricity, as the breakers of the fuse box would be open. But for thoroughness sake, I'm going to take the cross, the crucifix, and leave it here in this small room with only one entrance or exit, one door, and do a once over of the building itself. closing the door behind me to that room. I'm also going to shut out these lights. Wrong one. There we are. So at this point there are no lights running in the house. There are still LEDs on electronics, the thermostat, and as I said before, for someone else trying this, it would seem logical to prep by making sure you can quickly get to the route wherever your fuse box is to flick that back on since the connection in a breaker box, a fuse box, is a physical connection. It can be opened and closed. Because of that, as per the description of the game, ritual, creepypasta, you would think that the breaker box would be kicked off and all the fuses disconnected, open connections basically, but that does not appear to be the case. For those wondering if I did hear the phrase, that's not your biggest problem, after I whispered outside. It's difficult once you know what you're expecting to hear to absolutely make sure that it didn't pop in your head, but I didn't audibly hear it. I'll listen back, of course, to see if the camera picked up anything. I did, I did think strangely that I heard something like footsteps moving through the house when I was approaching the front door. But I looked through this house before starting. Um, it's completely empty. There are no pets and definitely nobody else here. So I assume the only reasonable explanation is the house settling. Since it doesn't appear as if the ritual went as planned since everything is not opened. That is a quick tour of most of the house. I say tour, or really, a, given the visibility, it's mostly for my sake to check to see if I notice anything opened that I didn't notice before. But I don't. I don't see anything that appears to be opened. But there is one other version, not as old as the original, that suggests the things won't open until you spend some time in your your safe room, your room where you left the crucifix. And as you can see, this is the one door, and it's entirely shut. I can give it some extra time, the benefit of the doubt, stay here in the safe room with my crucifix for an undetermined amount of time. Since I tossed off my watch at the beginning,
in uh, accordance with the prediction that all electronics would fail, an electronic uh, source of keeping time would be pointless. So, no watch. Of course, uh, there's the possibility, the theory that perhaps the camera, which of course has any recording electronics have built in a, a clock, could be interfering. Perhaps running the camera from the start um, causes an issue. <clears throat> to rule that out, in a sense, after I feel like it's been close to 30 minutes, I will likely just shut off the camera and uh, even though I'll only have 30 minutes left to close everything in theory, uh, I'll shut off the camera and just go repeat the process. The seven whispers all over again um, and then coming inside to see if anything is different. then turn the camera back on to let you guys know, let you guys and girls know how it went. So far nothing strange or unusual. I haven't heard anything on the other side of the door. In fact the most unusual thing was that short blip from the kerosene lamp. I'm actually quite familiar with kerosene lamps. Northwest Missouri, we used them all the time when there were power outages, basically, as I'm sure many of you have experienced throughout your life. Very handy, probably the only time most people end up using them, really, uh, but they're very handy in that situation. And of course, I've used them in a few of the videos on the channel, as they are a uh, terrific candle replacement whenever you need candles outdoors. Most of the time, candles outdoors means that you brought candles that can't be lit, basically. Can't be kept lit. So, in all my familiarity using a kerosene lamp, uh, although there is a definite flicker, which is constantly obvious if you're used to candle light or kerosene lamp light, that uh, flicker is constantly obvious in the edge of any shadow cast by something blocking the flame, the light from the flame. Uh, that's normal. The flame undulates, it wavers. Uh, but it is strange, in my experience, for it to just sort of blink out like that for a moment. I'll have to take a look at that um, when I play back the video later. Another thing anyone familiar with kerosene lamps and candles can tell you is that watching the flame dance is mesmerizing. It's easy to get distracted by it. As I think likely the camera can pick up, there is one LED on in this room. So by using that as a reference, uh, again in theory, assuming that the connection in a fuse box would be opened, 
you could use an LED on a device plugged in in a normal outlet to your wall uh, as a reference point to know when everything in your house was opened, again assuming that fuse boxes, breakers count. Conceptually, the idea of absolutely every single openable thing in a home being opened It's interesting to consider. Obviously, almost everyone has drawers, cabinets, cupboards, that sort of thing, um, but it's easily conceivable that there could be a home in the country where someone was moving, all sorts of real estate issues that leave homes without furniture. And clearly, in theory, using a home that has no furniture whatsoever would be the easiest method, the easiest approach, if you knew that you were going to have to close every single openable thing in that home. Of course, it almost seems uh, fitting that it would be a home in the country required, uh, for the most part, by the crop field requirement, the field that a scarecrow would go in requirement, um, puts you in a country home. It's very popular in the country to can or jar your own food. Uh, and of course, even a can of I don't know, corn, green beans, anything bought from the store, that was sealed at one point in time, obviously. The green beans, the vegetables, fruits, whatever, canned peaches, those were put in a can, and then the can was sealed. So clearly it was put together at one time, it was closed, sealed, uh, so it can be opened. So, uh, again, it's an interesting concept to wonder exactly what things would be opened and what wouldn't. Uh, lots of homes have valves that are adjusted to certain degrees, uh, certain well, certain uh, settings so that uh, your water pressure is at a certain level, so that um, well, uh, if your home uh, perhaps has uh, propane, uh, you might be familiar with uh, the valve on top of your propane tank. Uh, that's not in most homes, but if you have a uh, propane furnace, uh, you can easily imagine how uh, even, even pipes for plumbing, water valves, uh, valves close and open. So again, interesting concept. Conceptually, it could completely destroy a home. I mean, you could end up flooding your house uh, uh, with no electricity or uh, end up with a gas leak, all sorts of things. Of course, the rewards, uh, a year of physical, financial, or all-encompassing, I don't want to say good fortune, basically a lack of bad fortune in all of those areas, but uh, security, physically, financially, or, or overall, for a, for a year, uh, if this was a commonly well-known phenomena that uh, it was firmly established there were 50-year-old books in libraries all around the world discussing it and, and validating and documenting it. I think that even with a terrible fate of, uh, as one article implies, getting your head cut off, um, 
or not necessarily even cut off, but taken off somehow, un pulled off, torn off, um, but losing your head. Uh, others implying, of course, regardless if your head comes off or not, basically dying. The exact opposite of any kind of physical security. Even with that penalty, I feel like it would be a very popular a very popular habit among the people. Of course, again, getting into it hypothetically, there are so many different variables if this were well established and, and uh, if many many people were doing it never mind the things that do open the things that do close uh, but more about like the strict definition of what it means to be uh, somehow guaranteed physical security no harm will come to you you know for uh, a year uh, questions come up like well what if you put yourself directly in harm's way what if you tried to commit suicide or hurt yourself, some kind of self-harm, if you uh, had someone else try to hurt you. Exactly how would the uh, process work? How would the, the uh, man in the fields or, or what other, whatever system governed the uh, good fortune you garnered, how would it intervene in scenarios like that to protect you? Because uh, it doesn't seem to imply you just become invincible for a year when it says physical security. But anyway, rambling enough. I can still see an LED on that television. Um, and that there's a phone set there that has an LED blinking on it. But let's open the door and see what's on the other side. Again, leaving the crucifix here. And perhaps if we don't see anything, uh, maybe we can consider an off-camera shot, off-camera attempt. Quick glance, obviously you can see that the fridge, oven, and microwave, and none of those cabinets with those reflective bronze-colored handles, none of those are open. Very obvious this cabinet is closed. So we can see that everything has not been opened clearly. Um, I'll double check the basement. Not for the sake of who's so spooky but also to uh, in the laundry room here uh, to entertain the possibility of catching oh there's an automatic light and infrared light in there that's a uh, convenience since uh, if we did notice something moving around this uh, home, in the inside and the interior of the home, and it didn't trigger the light at all, we could make some assumptions, maybe draw some conclusions from it, conceptually thinking like theoretically that, oh well, if this thing somehow appears to the naked eye or somehow moves objects but doesn't seem to trigger that light, uh, we might be able to begin to theorize uh, how it, it interacts with, with physical objects. Uh, I think that was my fault. I think I wasn't holding the lamp quite high enough to keep my breath out of curving into it. So I'll blame myself for that little flicker of the light. But uh, back to what I was saying is that the basement uh, looks entirely perfect. Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing unusual. Clearly the electricity is still on, so the fuse box doesn't require checking. Making our way back to the safe room. I 
think at this point it's safe to go ahead and try giving it a shot without the camera. So, I could leave the camera here recording and go give it a shot, but I think it's more of a show of faith. It's more of a thorough, no electronics, no timing device, no, no, um, no camera, basically, to actually have no camera, as in power the camera completely off. So there will be a cut here. While I head back outside, uh, repeat the whisper seven times, and come back inside. I'll take a quick look around after I come back in. I'll clearly be uh, running my ass off closing things if it's uh, apparent to me that everything has been opened. Um, but I'll do my best, even in that event, to make sure that I get the camera back on to document it. That'll be the first order of business, even ahead of closing everything. But even if everything isn't open, I'll pick back up and make sure to update you and let you know. So, with a view of the fire there, I'll be right back. Well, here we are back. I can give you a quick view, taking the crucifix. A quick view of the house. As you can see, everything still closed up, even after heading back out. Now I thought to myself, many of you have uh, pointed out perhaps the reason many of these things don't work is because I have some sort of reverse magnetism towards paranormal entities or paranormal phenomena. So, to entertain that as a possibility, I'm going to go ahead and just not even to just entertain that, but to just be extra thorough, I'm going to go ahead and head out to the field behind the house and see if we see anything. I'm just awkwardly slipping on a jacket, if you don't mind. Better this way, so that I'm not, not at all likely to end up shaking the camera. In the cold, not like out of fear or something. Now, I'm sure if you didn't skip straight to the actual ritual part, I'm sure that many of you have seen the field around this area in broad daylight, or foggy daylight, but with almost no visibility here at night due to the darkness and the fog, hopefully you can still recognize some of what you see. Hopefully I can still recognize where the hell I'm going. It is very, very foggy. the edge of the actual field. There you can see the stalks of some weeds and then as we move a little further the clear stalks of soybean plants. In fact one still here. 
So, let's walk into this field for a short distance and see if we see anything. I, I can't speak for the camera, but I can tell you that my visibility, my eyes, are giving me something like 10, maybe 15 feet uh, of visibility. In fact, even with this lamp, if it weren't for a street light at the neighbors at the bottom of that, that long gravel road, kind of giving a dim illumination around the house and some of the tips of the trees behind me, I could easily get turned around in this field and not know which way was left, right, north, south, because of course the field is identical in all directions around me for 15 feet. Well, here we are. I couldn't imagine an easier place for the man in the fields to approach me. And just to be extra thorough, here is the crucifix, making sure you can kind of see that. There it is. I'm going to step away from the lantern. But who will scare the crows away? Show yourself to me, man in the fields. Hmm. Well, I'm not noticing anything strange. I haven't noticed anything strange so far. The lantern did go out on me the second time that I attempted this without the camera. Uh, but, upon relighting the lantern, uh, I did note that the wick had burnt down just a little bit. And I am keeping it at a very low setting, so it's, it's pretty normal for uh, a lantern at a very low setting uh, that hasn't been used in a significant amount of time for the tip of the wick to burn kind of quickly. Hmm. Well, guys, girls, I didn't notice anything strange so far. I haven't noticed anything strange or unusual the entire night other than the couple of lantern issues that I mentioned, which weren't very standout. And, of course, the footsteps from inside the home. Um, I, I would definitely say, of course, there was no... referee ashy figure noticed inside uh, by me and I uh, did not note anything strange uh, out here in the field nothing that appears to be a uh, scarecrow type figure I had fun it was interesting um, if you dig this sort of thing there will be a subscribe button in the corner and if you have any suggestions critiques uh, ideas you want to toss my way for uh, this process or others similar to it, completely other different new ones, uh, feel free to put those in the comment section below. I will definitely read them. Thanks. See you next time.